we were going to start shooting in a day or two, and uh, my recollection uh, was that uh, I think they yelled out of the window. I was walking down the street by their office, and they yelled out, and they said, Peter, go, go down to the garage, pick out a car, because we're going to be shooting a scene the day after tomorrow, the first day of shooting, and that scene calls for him to have a car. That's my recollection. And I said to myself, I never thought of a car. I, for me, a, a, a cop comes in a patrol car. And I thought, but this is not a cop. There's a homicide detective. So it I never dawned on me, oh, it's a detective. So he has his own, is it a personal car? I guess so. And my recollection is that I went down to the garage and they, they, they got a hundred cars there. And, uh... And I looked at them, and they all seemed, none of them were distinctive. Um, I mean, a million guys could have owned one of those cars. So I was looking for something that, I guess it's a little bit like when you think of, uh, if you think of Charlie Chaplin, and you think of his costume, you see that costume. And that's part of your memory of Charlie Chaplin. Uh, and I wanted something that would be distinctive like that. And so I didn't see it there. And I was, uh, in order to leave the garage, you had to go up to the first floor. And then from above, you look down, you saw the whole, you saw the whole garage. And from that vantage point up high, looking down, I saw the car. It was against the wall, way in the back, but it stood out because it was different than the other cars. And as I said, this is true. It had a uh, a perfect touch. It had a flat tire. Colombo was never comfortable if somebody considered him unique or smart or different. Colombo was most comfortable when people thought that when people that he was talking to considered him mediocre, considered him just another guy, the guy next door. That's what he wanted them to think. So when the script came up with some brilliant insight, I would never I was never comfortable saying I thought of it. So I would always say, you know, my brother-in-law, he works at the gas station on the corner of Fountain and uh, blah, blah. And uh, I ran into him. And you know what he told me? He told me blah, blah, blah. So every time there was a brilliant insight, I would always attribute it to a brother <laughs> If you've enjoyed your journey on the TV Time Machine, please like and subscribe. We look forward to having you again on the TV Time Machine.